Hello guys and welcome to TGN the Game Nerd the Show where I talk about Oplay Games and today we're going to be playing Super Mario Sunshine. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and went to Serena Beach, had an okay time. It was a bit annoying at some parts, definitely, uh, but it went better than I expected. And in this episode, Shadow Mario has something that we need. Or not, this isn't necessarily the thing that we need, but it, but stopping him from stealing this thing will allow us to get the thing that we need. Alright, so now it's just about to Turbo Dash 2. What this is, is the Turbo Nozzle. And what this does is, if you hold down R, you can do a Super Dash, which I know because of the frame rate doesn't look that fast, but I swear, Anyways, to do the next thing that we need to do, we need to, uh, go into a world and exit back out again, so let's hop right in. So we're not actually going to be doing a mission, I'm just going to quickly exit, but before we do that, I just want to point out, point out something really fun. Uh, first of all, Yoshi's over here, uh, so if you want to, you can grab him and use him for missions. Second of all, that guy is over there, so you can get sunglasses for this level. Third of all, we have this sign back here, left Rico Harbor, right Pina Park. And, of course, to the left there we have Rico Harbor, uh, which looks like you can jump down onto it, but unfortunately there's an invisible wall. Uh, there's also Delfino Plaza way over there. And to the right we have uh, Pina Park, and obviously we can't see them, but the two beaches that we see are Gelato Beach and uh, Ser Serena Beach. Also, I forgot to mention that Serena Beach, uh, when you look at it from a top-down view, looks like a GameCube controller. So that's a fun bit of detail. Anyways, we exit the area. And Shadow Mario has stolen something else. And as you can see, the camera points over to that pipe right there, which we can only access using the rocket nozzle, which is the thing that Shadow Mario has right there. So let's make our way up here. And spray him down. Thankfully, in these Delfino Plaza sections, Shadow Mario isn't too much of a difficult foe. I don't think you need to spray him as much as you do in actual levels. But yeah, I'm pretty sure the, the bad frame rate that I'm getting is only because I'm playing this on... Uh, I'm not playing this on official hardware, I'll just say. Shoot, now it's just about to rocket jump too. So whereas the turbo nozzle gave us horizontal distance, the rocket nozzle gives us uh, vertical distance. And this is something that I can actually show even despite the bad frame rate. It's much higher than we can jump in normal gameplay. Anyways, you want to head over to the shine gate, which was something that was mentioned in the first ep episode of the of this series. Rocket jump up to this area. I completely missed that. I suppose you can also rocket jump up from here. Yeah, and that, that's even better because it gives us direct access to this pipe and to the final level of the game before the actual, actual final level. Pianta Village, Episode 1, Chain Chomplets Unchained. Alrighty, so this world takes place mostly at night. There are some levels that take place during the day, but this sort of completes the uh, themes that I was telling you about earlier of, you know, most of the levels taking place during the day, uh, and then Serena Beach taking place while the sun is setting, and then this taking place at night. Let me see, will the chain chomplet go directly through the cardboard box? It will. Okay, I was hoping that I could, like, one-shot it right into the water, and it is so close, to. But yeah, that's our goal, to spray down the chain chomplet so they're not on fire anymore. Because all of this fiery goop has uh, set them completely aflame, or ablaze. I don't think 
is a flame. Because I was thinking of the of the term ablaze. Or the word, I guess I should say. So a flame doesn't really make sense. Uh, you can also bounce the chain chomplets off of walls. You are right there. Come on. Oh, come on. There you go. Turn around. Okay, it's just off camera, but I heard the sound effects, and yeah. So yeah, you just need to pull on their tails and sort of slingshot them uh, into the water. Kids, don't try this at home with actual pets. This is... The only reason that this is... That Mario is allowed to do this is just because... This is a fictional situation, you know? And with this, Chomplet number three has been placed right in the water. Remember, always be kind to your pets. That's official TGN the Game Nerd PSA number two. Be nice to your pets. I don't know if the Game Nerd PSA is going to be a running gag. Il Piantissimo's Crazy Climb, episode number two. I cannot tell you how excited I was when I realized that we had that we had another Il Piantissimo mission. Il Piantissimo might be my favorite character, favorite new character from Mario Sunshine. I don't know why, there's just something about him that I absolutely adore. Anyways, time to pull out the deep voice again. It's me, Il Piantissimo, and now listen. See that flag over there? Now you and I shall race to get there the fastest. Yes, my personal record is 30 seconds. Impressive, eh? Are you at the ready? Then get set and go! So yeah, go ahead and jump on over that fence and just take this path along the left side here. That's probably the quickest way that you can get over here. Now just get over to the tree and jump your way up. 1858. I remember in my first recording I got uh, 1981, which is the which is the year the, that that uh, Mario made his first appearance in a game, which was uh, Donkey Kong for the arcade. Grr, yes, grr. That was not so bad. You are quick, yes. I suppose maybe I underestimated you a small bit, perhaps. You try again after you've practiced more. Until then, I would love for Il Piantissimo to show up in a future game. Cause there's so much uh, setup. Uh, for him to make a reappearance. So, Nintendo, if you ever make a Mario Sunshine 2, more Il Piantissimo content, please. Episode 3, The Goopy Inferno. I remember this level. Strangely enough, Shadow Mario steals Flood during a normal mission, not during a secret mission, and completely turning the premise on its head, we now have to go through a normal level without Flood. This level is really cool. There's this YouTuber that I watch uh, called Zoomzyke, who did, like, analysis of game design for a lot of games. A lot of the time it was Sonic Adventure 2, but I think he did a video on this level in particular and how there are tons of different ways to go about it. Here's the way that I like to go about it. Just go along this guardrail here. Jump onto the tree. Make your way up here. Also, I think it's really pretty up here. Just gazing out. Uh, seeing the uh, Peanut Park Ferris wheel lit up. We get to see uh, the Sandbird area from behind at night. And uh, it's always so cool to know that, like, just beyond one area is another section like you know just beyond these mountains over here is Rico Harbor and Bianco Hills and Delfino Plaza and right over there is uh, Noki Bay anyways now we have to travel slowly make our way down I like to go up this right leaf right here then spin jump onto this front leaf 
Now, right at the very edge of this leaf, you're going to make a jump and it's going to be very precise. Spin jump and just hold forward. And you dive and you should be able to land right over here. Even if you don't dive, I'm pretty sure you land right below these platforms. Grab Flood once more. Flip. Hover. And once you spray down this guy right here, you will be done with this mission. Oh, you saved me. Thanks a bundle. Not sure what voices I'm giving these people anymore. I gave, like, Marvin Grossberg's voice to the one from Sienna Beach, and I'm not even sure what voice I did there. Episode 4, Chain Chomp's Bath. This reminds me of this level from Mario 64 DS that when I was a kid absolutely terrified me and genuinely gave me nightmares. Like, that's not even hyperbole or anything like that. I genuinely had nightmares about this level as a kid, where in Mario 64 DS, one of the levels has the chain chomp in Babom Battlefield off of its chain and roaming around, and you have to get really close to it in order to get, like, I think, like, a silver star or something like that. Uh, that absolutely terrified me as a kid. Uh... And another thing that terrified me as a kid was uh, the models for the boos in the original Mario 64 I thought looked incredibly spooky as a kid. And I absolutely could not watch anything Mario 64 related uh, for a little while until I was like six years old. When I was, uh, real young, I- and I still love doing this, I guess. I mean, it's kind of my job doing it, uh, but I always loved watching walkthroughs and, you know, let's plays of old games that I'd never played. And when I was real young, I watched a lot of stuff like, uh, like if I had to give credit to one YouTuber, uh, Chugga Conroy is one that, uh, I watched a lot. And watching old Let's Plays like that and, uh, just gave me, like, because when you're a little kid, your imagination runs wild, especially with older games, because things don't look quite right. And so, uh, things like the Happy Mask Salesman from Majora's Mask and the Shopkeeper from Link's Awakening, like, kept me up at night as a kid. Anyways, write your... Uh, dumbest fears as children uh, in the comment section below. Episode 5, The Secret of Village Underside. This one, I forget if it's annoying or not. I, I don't think uh, it's as annoying to get to as I originally thought it was. Uh, by the way, if you can somehow make it so that you can belly slide on the bridge, there's a part of the bridge where you will clip through. I'm not exactly sure how I normally do it. Uh, I'll see if I can like throw in a clip later of me doing it. Anyways, pineapple for Yoshi. But yeah, you'll just fall straight through the bridge there if you uh, belly slide. So, for some reason, bridges in this game uh, seem to have the weirdest collision. So anyways, just head over to this tree. This tree has pretty much every possible fruit you need. Oh, here's Sunglasses Man right here. Where's the flow? Oh, I guess he doesn't give me sunglasses in this level. Very strange. I think that's the only time I've ever seen the sunglasses guy just being a normal guy. So 
So with Yoshi, he has insane hops. Uh, and so you just want to hop your way across these mushrooms. Oh god, no. Oh, come on. There we go. Okay, I thought I got Yoshi stuck for a second, and I was absolutely going to freak out. Oh no, I remember which one this is. Oh god. Howdy, I'm a Chuckster. You'd better be careful when speaking to powerful Piantas. Some will chuck you straight up, but most chuck you backward. When it comes to tossing folk, I'm, well, a Chuckster. Let that be a demo to what is about to happen in this level. I am a Chuckster. So that doesn't seem like an annoying mechanic. You just talk to him and he throws you. Thing is, eventually you'll have these guys which are moving back and forth. You need to talk to them at the right spot or you'll either get over or you'll either overshoot it or undershoot it. And you'll have to you'll either die or you'll just have to wait for them to get back to the right spot. Don't hold back. Gra. And it also matters what angle you're standing at. So if you're standing at a like like a degree too far to the left, you will get absolutely chucked off the side of the edge. For some reason I have trouble jumping on enemies in this game. Oh no, that might be a bit too far. Okay. But the fact that I freaked out there just goes to show how finicky it can be. Okay, this is the final area. Now it has to be perfect, pretty much perfect. Or else you will get completely thrown off the side. I think this is the last secret mission, and what a way to end it off. Because this is a very annoying mission. Probably in my top five least favorites. I remember hearing horror stories about this level, and I think I got really lucky on my first time around, and uh I got it right, like, either, like, the first or second try. A and I was like, huh, why do people complain about that level so much? I thought it was pretty easy. And then I went back to replay this game, like, some years later. No! Oh, God! That was... Ugh, come on. This last Chuckster, especially, can be absolutely obnoxious, because you have to be damn near perfect in order to actually land in the right spot. Okay, I'm pretty much a master at that first section, and you have to wait so long for this guy. It is... Oh, it is the worst. I'm gonna actually jump over to the side a bit here. No, I did that too early. God damn you! This is the worst! And I got a game over too! Oh, uh, you're looking for bananas. Damn you. Why did I grab a pineapple again? What is wrong with me? What? <laughs> I've actually never seen that before. I've never overshot that. I've always landed, like, squarely in the middle. being careless. I hate that you have... you retain momentum. Even when a wall stops you, you're still pushing against it. So you get pushed to the side and you still... Ugh. Oh my god, thank god! Oh, it's over! Thank you. Yahoo! 
Ugh. That level is so much worse. Like, each time I replay this game, it gets, like, progressively worse than I remember it. Episode 6, Piantas in Need. Oh no, I just went away for a bit, and now look, I can't believe it, another fine mess, and it's a doozy. Some of the villagers are trapped in that burning ooze, and I just finished evacuating everyone a little while back. What in the round's happening? I think I may just start crying. I'm sorry to tr trouble you at a time like this, but please, could you find time to help us out again? Ten villagers are trapped in the slime, you must hurry. Alrighty, so we've got to save ten piantas in three minutes or less. So, for this mission, this was originally going to be the last mission that I would do this episode, because the next mission that we're going to be doing, the last one of this whole uh, world here, leads directly into the final mission of the game, and I was planning on saving both of those missions for a separate video that would be the finale. But looking back at the footage here, that stuff only takes up like 15 minutes, like, the next two missions only took me like 15 minutes to do, including credits, so I thought, you know what, why don't I go ahead and just put these two into one whole video, just so I'm not like stretching things out into separate videos for absolutely no reason. Okay, we've got two minutes left, and four piantas left to find. For some reason, whenever I'm playing through this, there's always one Pianta that escapes my grasp somehow, and I'm pretty sure it's the same one every time. I don't know how I keep forgetting the placement of it. I'm pretty sure it's in the back of the... Pretty sure it's in the back of the, of the uh, level here. So... Alright, we've got you. All right, you're dealt with, and then... Ah, there it is. Pile of goo in the very back. That was actually pretty cool. I did a triple flip right into the over-the-shoulder view. So thankfully, once you get all 10 piances, the timer has completely stopped. Now, just make your way across the bridge, however finicky it may be. How did I bonk? How did I bonk into that twice? It's a very easy to avoid obstacle. Same with that. <laughs> then once you get over here, talk to this Pianta guy, and he should give you the shine. You're the savior when you're in your debt. As a reward, please take this. Pianta Village Episode 7, Shadow Mario Runs Wild. This will be our final Shadow Mario mission. So like I just said, this will be our final Shadow Mario mission, but it'll also be our final mission of sorts. I mean, we sort of have one last level to get through to get to the final boss, but I don't know if that would be counted as a mission. Uh, either way, it's the last mission before we get to the final boss area, which is super cool. I can't believe we're here already. We're only seven episodes in. So now that we're here, Shadow Mario's leaving behind trails of electric or fiery goop or whatever the proper terminology is. He actually dodged me on that one. That was actually really cool. But yeah, just do more of what you've been doing already. Just follow him for a bit. Spray him a bunch. He's down. Eh, I'll remember this. And that is... Shine number 50. <laughs> He's facing... I didn't know you could actually do that. That's fun.
the entire town has been completely flooded. Now, we've pretty much only got one thing we've got to do now, and that's chase after Shadow Mario into Corona Mountain, and finally take on the big bad guy once and for all. Without further ado, let's begin one of the most annoying levels in Mario Sunshine. Corona Mountain. This level is very infamous, and it's not even one one of the ones that I'd consider my big three least favorites. Uh, but still, it is absolutely obnoxious, so it's probably my fourth least favorite uh, shine in the entire game. So this first section isn't too bad. There's some platforms with spikes, some with fire. Make sure to not touch the platforms with the spikes at all, or else you will instantly die. Uh, or at least when these spikes are up, I mean. When they're down, you can walk on them just fine. To get rid of the fire, use the hover nozzle. Uh, you could try to use the normal nozzle if you want, but that'd just be more difficult. So just use the hover nozzle, you should be good. Now, this part is very infamous. This boat is entirely reliant on the worst, most evilest thing in the entirety of Mario Sunshine. The physics system. This boat is entirely reliant on how you spray flood. One way that I've found you can make these a bit easier is if you uh, go into this over-the-shoulder view instead of just spraying normally. I found that this gives you a bit more control, but it can still give you a bit of annoyance. I don't even know if that was a proper phrase, but I'm trying my best out here, so... Need to nudge this ever so slightly. If the boat even so much as grazes like a, a rock or like some something else, it will sink. You know what? I'm fine just jumping out of here right now. You need to, if you want to get all of the blue coins, you need to go around collecting each and every one of these. And it is super tedious and annoying. So, that's reason number 4,531 of why I'm not 100%ing this game. Anyway, we've, we've got the rocket nozzle here. Now we need to go ahead and climb up on each of these clouds, which I think is actually a really cool idea for, you know, going to the final boss fight. Uh, platforming can be a bit cumbersome. That's a new word. I don't want to keep using the word finicky over and over again. So, cumbersome. Word of the day. Ah. Close. There we go. There's this speedrunner's glitch called Rocket Storage, which you can use to make this a lot easier. But I was actually able to do it the correct way. Yay! This is the final boss fight of the game, Bowser. Of course, with Bowser Jr. being part of the scheme, it's only natural that Bowser was part of this as well. Uh, that seems effective, just do that four more times. I never really gave a uh, proper voice to Flood. I guess just because the only lines that were really 
integral to the plot at, at any point were already voice acted in a cutscene. By the way, this is pretty much the only Mario game to have full-on voice acting for the characters, other than just having like grunts and stuff like that that play uh, and other sounds. Uh, in future games, it would all just be text boxes and stuff like that. Three more times, I'll just give Flood a basic sort of robot voice there. Uh, so basically, you just go around, use the rocket nozzle, and ground pound right into the little symbol right there. J just two m more times, Mario. Uh, I'd suggest going in a counterclockwise order. I'm going in clockwise order here, but that's actually a bit more difficult because you're walking straight into Bowser's fire. I don't know how I didn't think of that. There is one more p p place. Uh, accidentally died here. Uh, I almost sort of saved myself, but no, that is the final death of the LP. So yeah, once you've gotten every last one of these uh, platforms destroyed here, that will be the end of Mario Sunshine. We did it. Junior, I've got something difficult to tell you about Princess Peach. I know, she's not really my mama. Someday, when I'm bigger... I wanna fight that Mario again. That's my boy. Well put, son. The Royal Cooper Line is as strong as ever. Let's just rest a while. The vacation starts now. And that has been... Super Mario Sunshine. What an amazing game. I mean, of course, there were issues that I had, like that Chuckster level was absolute garbage, and there were many other points throughout this game where I was like, okay, this is getting super tedious now. But all around, I did have a really fun time playing this game. There's a lot to love, from a world that um, really feels connected in a way that no other Mario game has done, and a fun summertime atmosphere uh, that's just super relaxing. All around, just a great time to play through, so I'd suggest playing through it yourself if you haven't already. Uh, but yeah, this has been such a joy to play for you guys. I loved playing this game, and I hope this game gets a sequel sometime. I talked about it uh, previously in this video, but... 
uh, with the sort of post credit scene that we have here, there's a bit of setup for a sequel that I think could be really cool if they really wanted to try to pull it off. But yeah, all around, thank you guys so much for watching, and in the next video, in the next episode, we're going to begin a new Let's Play and play through one of my favorite games of all time. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye